Good morning, I'm Gene Rump. This morning, we'll take a rare look into the lives and activities of a group we've all been curious about, nudists. Everything from what really goes on behind the scenes of their camps to the reasons they choose to bear all in front of their friends and complete strangers. That's all next, this morning on Twin Cities Live. This is a fascinating subject. How do you, I wonder how you feel about all this. What, what did you think this morning when you got up and we're going to come to this show? You would ask me again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just said that when I got out of the tub, I can't imagine myself running around playing tennis. <laughs> I didn't look that good. <laughs> and I was very, would be very self-conscious. But I suppose if it's all right with them and... They look like real nice people, so I'm sure it's okay. <laughs> if it's all right with them, it's all right with me. But would you do it? No, no, I wouldn't. I father would father <laughs> Anthony would have a fit. <laughs> I say Father Anthony would have a fit. Oh, the, the priest at the church would have. Well, are, isn't this kind of perverted? Isn't this sick? This I don't think not in their minds. I mean, you can be more so the, like that, reading a book or something else. I think if they have good, healthy minds, it's fine. But not, mm -hmm. but not for you. It's not for me. Even some priests. Why is it for you, Dennis? Why is it for you anyway? Why is it for you? Why is it for me? Basically, because I think it's a natural extension of uh, just normal activities in a, in a lot of homes uh, throughout uh, the states, and uh, it's uh, been accepted for many, many years that people should do what comes naturally. And I can't see on a very hot day turning around and. Uh, wearing a bathing suit that's full of uh, sand and everything else and Do you uh, separating agree with that? myself from the people mm -hmm. that I like very much. Do you agree with friends. what he's saying? Um, well, I agree with it, but not out in... I just was raised that you don't do it in public. Mm -hmm. And that's in here. Yeah. I'm what? just thinking sanitary. I, I think it's greed if you want to run around nude. I feel stuffed in clothes, but I just... I don't know, sanitary-wise, I just wouldn't, and us ladies especially. We carry a towel more so men. we go to sit, we'll sit down. Yeah. It's a While well, sitting and uh, we women know there's certain times when you just couldn't. It's uh, just a natural thing. God created that way, and it's not looked at as a dirty time of the month or no, women. Yeah. Just, it's yeah. just a part of your natural body to do but it. But I, I don't think of it as being dirty. I just was raised to wear clothes, and I just, well, I'm too old now. To go You're too old now to take off your clothes. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> if you could see the shape my body was in, you'd agree. You is that the, the thing that most people, there. Cliff and Linda, is that the thing that most so people are worried you, about? If you could see some of our members, you'd feel real good about your shape. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. You'd well, probably I, realize how I good you are. I don't resent my body. It's just that all you see on TV, did you ever see a car advertised with an uh, old floppy, uh, <laughs> you know? You see a, a beauty coming out, and I, when I think of. Uh, Going to a nudist camp, I think of all being young, beautiful. And you're a 58 Rambler, is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a 48 Chevy, I guess. I, I don't know. But um, I have nothing against it, but I'm, I just couldn't do it myself. And sanitary-wise, I just couldn't picture it. I just can't. Do you all feel like you're in a beauty pageant when you're out no. there? No. no absolutely One, no, because, one thing, it isn't, it isn't a body beautiful contest. If you went out on University Avenue and you stopped the first 200 cars, took everybody out of those cars, the sizes, shapes, professions that you would find is what you find at Avitan. Well, you can look at us. We are not body beautiful. The ages, well, the sizes, Well, we wouldn't say shapes, that, you know. We <laughs> <laughs> we're all different, and that's Avitan, that's every nudist. But how did you feel the first time that you all went? Didn't you all feel uh, like, you feel a little oh, frigid at first, yeah? but then you get uncomfortable because of the fact you have your clothes on. Did you have to get the hang of it? I don't know if that's the right <laughs> phrase <laughs> to use or not. Good terminology. Let it all <laughs> hang out of it. <laughs> no, I think you become to, to soon become to realize you just accept the people as they are. You're not looking at them for their beauty or their shape. Or what they do or yeah. how they how make their living. How expensive their clothes are. Right. How, 
you take a person that goes out there, if a person can only afford a pair of Levi's and a t-shirt, or somebody comes out there in a $200 suit, who knows? Because the suit's back in the dressing room. Yes, yeah. everything's back in the dressing room. It's, it's all personality yes. and what, what the people are, not what they do or what yeah. they and make. And speaking of the lady with the priest, we have had a priest who is a member of Avatan. We've had a Presbyterian <laughs> minister. Oh, yes. He might uh, come out have, and recognize somebody he knows. You don't approve of that priest being out there, do you? I don't care. <laughs> We're serious. Absolutely. Yeah. What? What? And we do have uh, some clubs that have non denominational. Uh, Services on yes. on Sunday that are held in the nude, and uh, so you can you don't have to miss church or whatever. If if I would go to a camp, I would want to do recreational sports and things like that. And I understand that you do do that there, but I don't know how I could play tennis or how a little child could go down a slide with if it seemed impractical. With we hope clothing. there's some water going down the slide along with them. It helps an awful oh, okay. lot. Okay. In the pool. Yeah, yeah, cool. In the pool, right? Our, uh, crew went out, our crew went out and shot some uh, film at uh, Avatan over the weekend, and uh, there is the pool area and shuffleboard. Is there any, any place where you absolutely cannot wear clothes? In the swimming, swimming pool. pool. Just yes. cool. In the swimming pool. It's because we're too cheap to uh, clean our filters, and it's the polyester <laughs> in the swimming suit that does most yep. of the damage All on your kinds filters. Of problems with the uh, materials. And that's where the teens yep. basically start out their nudity is at the swimming pool because the swimming suits are forbidden in the swimming pool. Yeah, I'm really curious to know if the cameramen took off their clothes while they were filming. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep that a secret. Yeah. <laughs> that's their business. I didn't go along, so oh, I, yeah. I did not do that. Remember, clothing is used when it is necessary. Say somebody gets uh, certain parts of their anatomy burned because it's their first or second visit out, you've got to be reasonable and put something on. It's when protection is required. If you're doing some repairs on a, on a trailer or a cottage or whatever the case may be, certainly right. wear something as uh, the uh, job dictates. Mm -hmm. Or if it's chilly or yes, whatever. Or anything. Whether yes, or anything. Sure. Right. Uh, what do you do uh, for mosquito lotion? Uh, okay. Skin you have lots work. of it. Actually, <laughs> spray <laughs> all over. Spray all over, yeah. A lot of swatting. Face it, of we're, we're living in Minnesota, and there's a lot of mosquitoes out there. Same there are a lot of men. poggers out there, too. Mm -hmm. with yeah, poggers and yeah. bug, bug zappers, and yeah. they use everything out there. And uh, uh, ticks and chiggers and things like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But just like ticks. if you go out in your backyard, you're going to get wood ticks. Stay where the grass is cut. You don't run into ticks. Good morning. You're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. Yes. Um, I just wanted to make the comment that I have to disagree with this whole concept. I think it's, it's extremely sexually exploiting. And I just had a question for all these people. Does it ever become a, a sexual... Uh, don't they ever get sexually aroused? Or, or I just... I don't understand it, and I don't agree with it. Surprisingly, to... people are not sexually aroused. That's the greatest fear of most people. Oh, come people. on. The first time no. they come. No. Really? No. There is no. more no. sexual no. type activity and looks. And I mean, as, as a guy, I think that would be the first uh, question on my mind. But uh, when you're at I... a beach, you like to imagine it's what imagination these girls that, have. That creates sexual and arousal. It's all in your mind. Yes. Out at Avatan, everything is basically hanging out, as you said <laughs> earlier. <laughs> and what is, there is nothing sexual or enticing about that. No. It's the unknown that becomes sexual enticing. and Imagination. exciting. Exactly. But isn't this just one big orgy that's going on up there? Do you think we could exist for 25 years if that sort of thing was going on? <laughs> well, you know, Dick Gross did in Indiana at well, Roselawn at Dick, Naked City. Yeah, he was selling uh, passes to the club to anybody that wanted to come in as long as they had the money. And yeah. when he took over that club, he was also kicked out of the ASA, American Sunbathing Association, because of his practices. Right. And Dick DeRose's organization as such, we do not acknowledge as having anything to do with us and don't want that kind of connotation because we aren't. Just like the girly shows downtown and uh, theaters, things like that. We do not have anything to do with that. So do you have rules? What do you do to keep yeah, it from... Very strict rules. Very strict rules. Yeah. Tell me about the rules. Screened when they... The sex Conduct things. which requires no apology, I think, uh, sums it up very nicely. If you have to apologize yeah. for something you've done, then you've done something wrong. Right. right. On, the, on the grounds, yeah. a, even a married couple would be allowed to walk maybe with their arm around each other or yeah, hand in hand, it. and that's about it. Uh, now, in the we have a campground trailer park up there in their own accommodations it's their business what they do but out on the grounds that's not allowed no overt sexual acts on the ground you mean you can't hug or squeeze or 
No. Well, like like oh. I say, the, you know. As uh, we said, like a kitchen kiss would work, but not a bedroom kiss. <laughs> 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 Well, that yeah. sounds kind of prudish, doesn't it? Right, we are. <laughs> but we have a, yeah, it's a family. That sounds like any family. family type type club. It's a family environment. <laughs> I don't know. What? It's, it's a family type club. We have yeah, a lot of children what? out there. Yeah. Is this just a camp once a year you go, that you go to? Or? No, it's no. open all summer. No, we're open all summer. And in fact, we are open in the wintertime. I've, I was a teen advisor out there one year, and we took uh, the teens out, and we have a, a wood burning stove in our in our clubhouse, we put up the wood burning stove. They brought their snowmobiles out. We've got 40 acres for them. They were out on the snowmobiles without any clothes? No. no. <laughs> Just because we're snow 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 snow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're licensed by the state it's, as a trailer park. Yeah. So we have a campgrounds that some people have permanent <coughs> trailers out there and some people bring out campers or tents, that type of thing. You Anderson and Elaine, how did you all uh, come to become nudists or is it naturalists or? Naturist. Well, Naturist is another yes. term, and we'd prefer to use that than nudist, because nudity, Explain in the sense that today, connotates, you know, something, Sex, sexuality. sexuality and everything From else, which mm -hmm. is good, but not in the way it's portrayed in the media. So and how old, how did you come to this lifestyle? Well, my husband clipped out a little question once from the newspaper. We're from Winnipeg, actually, and uh, he, it was a response to where was the club in Manitoba? So he stuck away in the drawer, and one day he was cleaning out the drawer, and he came across it again. He said, how about our writing away for this, just out of information? Yeah. I was a little scared that we were getting into a swimming swinging a club and that, but we got a very nice reply from the people, and we went to the first meeting, and still a little hesitant. But we met the people, and we're very pleased, and we've been new to since 1971. 71. They interviewed us to make sure that we would fit in and everything, and we weren't going to upset uh, the club, or uh, and that we conform to the kind of questions did they ask you? Well, they wanted to make sure that uh, we weren't uh, uh, swingers and weren't going to create a problem uh, and not uh, follow the regulations mm -hmm. and everything that they had set down a little more strict back then. <coughs> uh, and uh, when they found out that we would fit in, then we uh, we became members. But this was in January, so of course there's just uh, a saunas in a person's home or whatever the case. Elaine, may what be. do you do in real life? I'm a teacher. A teacher? Yeah. What would happen in your school if they knew that this is what you do? Uh, I haven't hidden it from anyone. Uh, do you ever have like a bumper sticker on the car? I used to have a bumper sticker on my car. You did? Dare oh, yes. to go bear. Yes. Dare to yeah. be bear? Dare, dare to go, go bear. bear. Yeah. 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 Uh, this was in a school I was in twice before, mm -hmm. two schools before, and people used to ask me. And I frankly told them what I'm telling you. And I think some of them were awfully surprised and nothing more was said about it. I think about three people in my school that I'm in presently know about it. They say it's not for them, but it's your choice. Nudity isn't Cliff for everybody. Linda, how did you my come to be uh, My license plate says nudist and Mary says Abitan. So we're not too worried about it. How about you, Cliff and Linda? How did you uh, come to the lifestyle? here? My uh, uncle helped start Abitan in 1961. And when they took over my legal guardianship, they took me out to a club in Kansas and said, this is the way we are, and if you like it, fine. How old if were you? I was 16 at the time. Boy, that had to be terrific for a 16-year-old, <laughs> you yeah. know? It was in the fact that uh, there was no more uh, thinking or wondering, you know, if, when you're growing up as to what the other person or what the other gender is mm -hmm. about. And uh, as far as uh, raising children in the nudist environment, there's been no record of any serious sex crimes, sex yeah. crimes or any any sex, mm -hmm. sex, sex crimes committed by. Then when were you introduced to this? Then I was introduced to it through my husband Clifford a couple years back. And the first time he said it, you said, "I'm very interested. I'd like to see what it's all about." Ooh, okay. And how about the two of you who are not married, by the way? We okay. belong to American Sports and Health Club, and. I used to go into the sauna. They were all segregated there, men on one side and women on the other. And I went into the sauna, and I used to go into the sauna nude. It was only women. I mean, to me, that's what you do in a sauna. And all these women had clothes on. They had sweatsuits <laughs> on. They had towels on. And I'd come in. They'd get up and walk out. And once there was this lady who walked in. I was there alone, of course. And the lady walked in, and she looked friendly. And so I said, geez, do you have a problem with me being like this? And she said, no. 
her and her husband at that time were the membership chairman for Avatan. And she proceeded to tell me about Avatan, and I said, okay, give me the address. We wrote that day. We got an answer back. Two days later, uh, her husband called the next day. We went up and to Avatan on Saturday. We joined on Sunday, and we bought a trailer on Monday. <laughs> well, you got right into it. Yeah, so we you. Well, we were private nudists at home before that for mm -hmm. maybe three years before that. Yeah. But just didn't realize there was a place around. I lived within four miles of where the club is located for a year and a half and never heard about it. It just doesn't cause any big waves with the locals up there. <laughs> uh, later on in the show, you're going to meet some of the kids who are here this morning, and we'll find out how you feel about all this. We're talking about nudists, and I hope you'll stay with us on Twin Cities Live. <laughs> Len Bias, dead at age 22, and just eight days later, Don Rogers, dead at age 23. Both young, promising, healthy athletes cut down in their prime because of cocaine-induced heart failure. What is it that's causing athletes to turn to such deadly addictions? Why is drug abuse reaching such epidemic proportions off the playing field? Wednesday morning on Twin Cities Live, we'll try to answer those questions. And we'll tackle the issue of mandatory drug testing with the help of former Minnesota Viking Carl Eller, who struggled to overcome his own drug addiction and has gone on to help others. Call us right now for your free tickets. Tomorrow morning's show, 641-1298. There's uh, some more of that uh, videotape of uh, what goes on at Abitant. I wonder, and I saw this uh, tape earlier upstairs, why is volleyball the national pastime of nudists? It seems like every time you see nudists, you see them playing volleyball. Why is that? It's a non-contact, non-violent type of sport. And you can get a lot of people on a court at the same time. Right. You Makes sense. Good morning. You're on Twin Cities Live with us. Go right ahead. Yes, um, my husband is a nudist, and he clipped one of those little articles out, Family Fun Weekend. And we have two small children, and I'm real worried about the children growing up and seeing all the private parts that we're trying to tell him that are private, and now we're outside in the wilderness jiggling around. Those what private parts aren't private anymore. Right. <laughs> yeah. I would like to uh, ask how the husband could be a nudist, because one of the requirements is that the husband and wife join together because it's a family-oriented uh, well, club. We're kind of like you, uh, one of the couples, we're kind of the private nudists in home right now. Private. We both are, and I'm just worried about the, well, I guess the children see us, but other people in the colony or whatever, I'm just real unsure about the children going up there with us. First of all, it's a camp. We don't like to connotate the feeling of being a colony or some places call it a camp. It sounds almost like a commune, yeah. you know? Yeah. It sounds right. almost like right. something that Don't the hippies know that did. Don't really got yes. started yes. there. There are clubs, resorts, uh, parks, but there is no Never such thing as a nudist colony that right. I know of. Mm -hmm. Kids are natural nudist. When yeah. you stop and think about your child growing up, you have to tell the kid to put on clothes. You have to make the kid keep clothes on. So kids make natural nudists, going out to the club, they don't pay any attention. All of us in society, adults, we're worried about what somebody looks like, what a body looks like, mm -hmm. how a kid is going to react. Kids don't bother. They aren't worried about sex and all the other things that, adult put, that who's, adults put on. Whose kids are here today? Ours are. Shannon and Clinton. How'd you feel the first time you went there? Well, I felt it was a little strange, but I got used to it right away. And is it okay for you? Yeah. It never bothers you to see people's private parts? Huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> private parts. Yeah? Well, yeah. God created us all, all the same way. Right. And it's in the eye of the beholder, I believe, that what they feel is private and not private. Mm -hmm. Nose, and do you elbow, believe that? whatever. Yeah. 
But do you tell your friends at school that this is what you do on the weekends and during the summer? A few of my friends know. And how do they act? They think it sounds like an interesting place. I bet they do. <laughs> <laughs> but does, does it do anything to the way they feel about you? I mean, if they find out that you spend your summers, and you're how old? I'm going to be 15. Okay, if they find out that you spend your summers going to a nudist camp, does that also mean to them that you might be easy? No, it doesn't bother them at all. They don't say anything about it. But are we giving other kids that kind of subtle message? Well, your, your younger children, their biggest problem out at the club is how quick they can get to the sandbox. They really or don't care, swimming or the swimming yeah. pool, yeah. Or, or whatever, or get to or the sports. What but with is, teenagers, it's a whole it's lot a different. Good, it's a good right. meeting place right. for teenagers because now, like Shannon has friends that are from Rochester and from Duluth and from different parts of the state, and the only time that she really gets to see her friends from the club is when we all meet at the club. And there are other people there your age. Yeah. How many? Um, a few. Okay. Uh, good morning. You're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. Good morning. I'm really, really glad this is on. I'm taping this as, it on, as it's on. Uh, my boyfriend and I joined uh, a club about 15 miles away from Avitan about mm -hmm. okay. four weeks ago. Um, we were, had been looking for one for months and months and months, and we finally had seen an ad in the paper, and we went up for our orientation. And I remember the first day I went, I wasn't skeptical at all. I was a little bashful. And everybody else that came to the club was disrobing on the lawn and everything. And they were just saying, hi, how are you doing? And I went into the bathroom to disrobe. And I remember coming out thinking, oh, what are they going to think of me? And I walked out, and I felt so good. Um, I just love the openness and the honesty of these people. And I think it's great. I really do. And I'm glad to see that the bullies are on there because I'm an... I'm an ex-Canadian, so it kind of makes me feel a little <laughs> even better. Yeah. And do you tell your friends about what you're doing? I do. I yeah. certainly do because I feel I'm not doing anything where I'm hurting anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm doing something that I thoroughly enjoy. We're not here to push no. our nudism on anybody. It's no. not for everybody. We just want to, people to be knowledgeable of that. Yes. Yeah. One of the biggest <laughs> problems is what people perceive happens at a nudist camp. If they really understood the situation and understood that it was just an, ex uh, an extension of uh, a normal uh, trailer park or campground, mm -hmm. uh, except that uh, kind of like Jellystone Park, with right? The, well, yeah. okay, yeah. yes. Yeah. Like then, uh, then there would be no problem, and I'm afraid we'd have to. Uh, well, do you invite visitors? Find, oh oh yeah. yes, on certain bases, definitely. You're, a, you're just now retired, is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, if I can arrange a weekend for you to go up and check the place out, do you want to? There's one complication. It's uh, couples only, and I would have an awful time convincing my wife to go along. And I wonder how many other couples in this world have a situation which could be reversed, where the wife would like to go and can't talk to the husband in it. I'm Hap sure that happens. happens both ways. Yeah. Yes. Right. Oh, we've, yes. had, we've had people that come out and visited for the first time, and where the, the husband has convinced the wife that this is what he would like to do, and she says, okay, fine, I'll go out and check it out with you. And generally, it's the wife that takes her clothes off first. She's How the one that's, that's the slowest one to get out there, but generally the quickest one to take her clothes off because she feels better that guess way. I guess that tells it's you women are more adaptable. <laughs> is, that, is, it, is it true what dear Abby says, that a lot of women uh, do their house cleaning in the nude? How many women here have uh, done the house cleaning? Well, there's a couple of hands. There's three, four, yeah. yeah. Ironing isn't recommended, though. <laughs> <laughs> you do barbecuing in the nude? Yes. 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 You do? Yes. Yes. Frying bacon last yeah. weekend. <laughs> that's another problem. <laughs> How many nudist colonies are there here in Minnesota? There are, there are no nudist colonies. There or are nudist two camps. campgrounds. Two camps. There are two clubs. There are three clubs in the state, two with grounds. There are, are approximately 200 uh, organized clubs throughout North America. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are uh, under the sanction of the American Sunbathing Association, which is divided into uh, six regionals throughout the continent. And the American Sunbathing Association is only one part of approximately 30 international clubs throughout the world uh, that uh, are under the umbrella of the I, International we Naturist the, Federation. We went to the library, and this you can get this at the library. When I was 16, you couldn't get these at the library. <laughs> this is the uh, Nude Beaches and Recreation Guide to the Entire World, including places in Minnesota and places in the Twin Cities. Yes. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Did you ever get that strange feeling that you had lived a previous life? I mean, you might have traveled to a new place and then sworn that you'd been there before. Maybe you've been reincarnated and simply don't know how to tap into your old lives. Bizarre evidence for reincarnation occurs all the time. A child, for no apparent reason, begins speaking in a foreign language. That persistent pain in your neck that baffles the doctors or an unexplained phobia is perhaps the result of an event that took place in a previous life. Thursday on Twin Cities Live, we'll delve into the possibility of physical and emotional help through past life regression, the practice of hypnotizing people in order to detect past lives. Maybe you'd like to try it. Call us for free tickets to Thursday's show. Here's the number, 641-1298. Hi, thanks for waiting. Good morning. You're on Twin Cities Live. Go ahead. Yes, my question is, are there any people on the panel that have experienced discrimination in their employment, and what is the majority of uh, jobs that the people hold that are at this camp? Are they working while they're at the camp, or is it just strictly during the summertime that they're there, they're off of their jobs? Mm -hmm. We're on vacation oh. right now. Yeah. We're hoping to be back. So for most weekend. people, it is a vacation we or a weekend retreat. That yeah. kind of we, we got a weekend retreat or, or whenever you can get right. out there. It's sort of like the cabin at the lake, right. only it's a trailer at the nudist club. <laughs> We've come down for the last 15 years. And you have a lot years. less to pack, is that Yeah, right? yeah. that's true. We've, We've, come, come, We've come down for the last uh, 15 years. Uh, we have a cabin here, but we also have a club in Winnipeg, and we go there on a fairly regular basis. And uh, yes, work is done by people uh, at the, uh, their own trailer facilities or cabins in the weekends. Mm -hmm. But there, there is some discrimination yes. and there are some people that, that uh, they don't know how their employer is going to take it so they don't make it public that they are nudists. I have never had my employer itself. Uh, I work for the city, I worked in private industry and I've never had the employers say you can't have a job here because you're a nudist because that's illegal. But I have had various people that I work with or for ask strange questions, which then mm -hmm. I get into the subject a little bit more. They realize that I'm not talking about a sex orgy or something like that, and I really am not hassled after that. Uh, how much does all this cost? It fluctuates on what you want to be. The, the how we have different. You be yeah. We have basically we have, uh, an associate membership, which is your first year membership, and then we have a regular mem membership. Uh, personally, it costs, our, our cost is about $300 Isn't a year. the club pretty discriminatory during that first year? You were talking about discrimination at work. Don't, aren't you pretty s strict about who you let in after that first year? You're on a three-month probation period when you start, but basically, even those of us up here, all of us have been members for years. We're basically all on probation. If you do something very far out and like annoying what? or well, if you suddenly change and do all the things we're saying you can't do, if you sexually approach people, if you went and grabbed people, if you broke a whole lot of rules and did so very badly, you could be kicked out no matter how okay. long. Right. You throw anyone out? Have you thrown oh, no. anyone out? Yes. Oh, no. Yes. Why? For well, one one person that I can, or a couple Conduct. that I can I can think of, they were approaching people to swing on the grounds. And uh, what you do in your private, what you do at your own home or in your own private life is your own business. But up there on the ground, swinging is not allowed. And if so, wait a minute. Does that mean that in your private lives you are swingers? No, no, no absolutely absolutely not. not necessarily mean absolutely that. Not. No, it just yeah, says yes. that no. a swinger could belong to the club, and we may not know that a swinger belongs as long as they keep that away from the, the club. club. Yes. That's what matters to us, your conduct up there at the club. At the club, and yeah. Not necessarily mm -hmm. your conduct your in your house. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Or club sanctioned activities. If they approach yeah. people at the club and the people complain, they'd get thrown out of the club. So do you have parties at your homes? No. Some people do, some people some don't. People some people get togethers of people that they meet. We have parties at our yeah. home, but everybody that comes to our party isn't necessarily a nudist either. Yeah. We're going to have I'm a birthday party for our daughter, and that. And are you going to wear your birthday suits? Are there, <laughs> are, 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 that does not. Hi, you're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. Good morning, Gene. Hi. Um, I just have a comment for the whole panel. Uh, I think this is probably the finest example of America that I can think of. I don't necessarily agree with the views of your guests, but I think uh, that in an open society, that they should have every right to do 
whatever they please. And I think yeah. that you're doing a lot to dispel the possible myth that it's just a wild orgy kind of a thing. And I think um, you're doing an excellent job. And also, I have one more question. Uh, do you expect any repercussions uh, from anybody, friends, employers that um, you are aware of uh, uh, because you're on the show this morning? Mm -hmm. I don't think they'd be <coughs> no. here if we thought that no. way. I've no. done PR for years, uh, done TV programs, radio, TV, have gone to other so no states problems. and opened. Do you ever, do you ever run into problems with the law? I mean, aren't there places? The, uh, Could you go down to Lake Harriet and do this? The sheriff's yeah. office in the county that the club is located and has, we have a, a gate and a combination lock on it. They have the combination to that lock at all times. They're invited to come through, to cruise through the, the campgrounds at any time, and they do. Yeah. And we have very good relations with the local police and the One reason why I belong to Avitan is because I don't want to be arrested because I want to lay in the sun without clothes on. And a lot of people do go to the beaches, which I think it would be great if they were legal. I travel all well, over I just the world. Wonder, you know, I just wonder about, you know, I was talking about this uh, catalog from, from the library. It lists some places in the Minneapolis area, the Mississippi River Flats, a place near on the Cedar Lake, I'll give you the directions later on, uh, <laughs> Twin Lakes, uh, and the uh, St. Cloud uh, Quarries, all, all in the Minneapolis area. Couldn't you get arrested for? You could. Yes, you could. Yes. 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 Well, isn't that a little same dangerous? Same. And couldn't people get uh, awfully surprised if they went out to the Cedar Lake East Side, Hidden Beach, overall favorite of most area nude sunbathers? Huh? That thing's badly out of date, but you do get tickets if they get you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. what, what does a ticket cost? Depends on the mood of the judge. Right. <laughs> yeah. Could. Yes. Literally. Uh, the, uh, well put. It's a shame that there isn't a legal nude beach in the area. There should be. There's a lot of people that would like to use one. In a state with 13,000 lakes, it seems a little bit odd that we can't have one for clothing optional Sunday. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. Stay with us. We'll be right back on Twin Cities Live. Don't go away. They've got a locked gate and they screen people. Do they ever have people that try to sneak onto the grounds? And if so, what do they do about it? Oh, yes, we do. Escort them off. <laughs> they are, for one thing, we have a, a limit on the, the amount of single people that can belong to the club because the founding fathers it was all families and they wanted to keep it a family type of club, which I think is a good idea too, although I'm a single. <laughs> but uh, only 20% of the membership can be singles at any given time, and that's divided between males and females. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are males, single males that would like to belong to our club that can't join because of the quota. So, and they, so they try to sneak in sometimes. One guy came on a couple years ago. Well, what happened is I seen him in the clubhouse and I didn't recognize his face. <laughs> and so I questioned him and I was right. He was not a member. And I asked him how he got on and he said he came through the woods. So I got the groundskeeper and we told him to go back and get us calls. We were calling for a sheriff escort. Mm -hmm. And when he went back to get us calls, he was gone a long time. And the groundskeeper and I split up and started looking for him. Finally, he starts coming back. He doesn't have his clothes. He couldn't find them. <laughs> the sheriff worry, took him know. away in a borrowed towel. <laughs> and then we announced over the loudspeaker for any of the kids who wanted to join in a scavenger hunt to come up to the With office. The clothes. <laughs> yeah, and so we sent the kids out to find his clothes and we gave a prize to the winner who found them. <laughs> Hi, you're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. I'm wondering, has become, becoming a member of the naturalist affected your sex life? And if so, how? Probably uh, enhanced it. It, yeah. hmm? it has yes. enriched it. Um, there's just nothing to really How hide. is this? A lot more relaxed about everything. 
For one thing, yeah. See, when people come to terms with their own body and themselves as individuals, they're a lot more relaxed with the people around them. And this is one of the big advantages of uh, being a nudist is that you are uh, with people that uh, are a lot easier to get to know because they don't have any of the social veneers and everything that uh, mm -hmm. are there when they're uh, clothed. Gee, I wonder, is, is it possible yeah. when you're up there without your clothes on, is it possible to tell a lie? <laughs> I suppose so, but I, I mean, what, so. what need is there uh, to uh, do that sort of thing? You just There's be a, yourself. Yeah, That's just awesome. be yourself. <clears throat> uh, people... Uh, you seem so much more vulnerable is what I'm saying. Mary, Mary well, and I were, were at a, a national convention mm. in Maryland in 1976, uh, and they there was a medical team there that took the blood pressures of everybody that yeah. they could there. They wanted to compare it with general right. society. There were a couple and thousand people there yeah, at this convention. Yeah, there was like right, 1,300 people, maybe 1,400 people. And uh, they averaged lower than the general general society. Quite a so bit lower. Quite a bit lower, yes. matter of fact. And as far as your sex life goes, you don't necessarily have to turn your lights off all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what do you find most significant about what you do. I think a, everybody the that, there, that is a nudist will give you a different answer. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I am up there for one reason, Jack's up there for another, everybody on the panel is. And we have tried to come up with something in common and we couldn't. And most well. of us, the lady who said I wasn't brought up that way, most everybody, we tried to do a, a sort of a survey and we asked, how were you brought up? I found more people who were brought up like me where nudity is not done and basically it's almost dirty than the other way around. It was very strict, as far strict as the, growing up in terms of nudists. As far as the panel goes, I believe I'm the only one that ever grew up in yeah. a nudist So the rest of you nudist. feel like you're somehow protesting against something in no. your childhood? No, no. no. just Almost doing what's natural. Almost like if you, a uh, child, finds a butterfly and puts it in a jar and puts the lid on it. The butterfly is very, very confined. It must feel certain exhilaration when the lid is open and the butterfly disappears. But it's about the same thing. Possibly the only uh, the only thing that nudists have in common, I would say, was that uh, they can separate nudity from sex yes. in, in their mind. They don't use nudity as a sexual trigger yeah. like some people do. I was wondering if you have a lot more in common too. When you get together, you realize that you've got a lot. Oh, common, such and, as maybe you're all Democrats. And whenever you get together, you know. <laughs> no. Not over now, there. There, now it's out. Now it's out. <laughs> yes. Not Figures really. the Democrats would be the ones, and right? No. And that's, that's like the clothes thing. Everybody takes off all their clothes and all their jewelry, basically. So people have to make it on their personality. It isn't, you don't hang around with somebody or start talking to somebody because they wear designer clothes and so do you. Do you ever run into anybody you know? Like yeah. Uncle Charlie or... Oh, that's uh, happened, yes. We have, yeah. we have two other well, members that I went to Gee, high what would with. that do to you if you were going to the camp the first time? <laughs> and <laughs> you <gonna> go home? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to be embarrassed about. Uh -uh. People, are not, no, not re people are not required to be nude to visit, by the way. I, uh, I, I respect you for what you can feel, because deep down inside, I think to myself, oh, if I could only take some of these clothes off. But I thought one of the neighbors. Try to restrain why, yourself why while you're here. Huh? Yeah, to see what she's doing while you're at work. You know, I just but see we do this at a place where it's accepted and where we don't infringe on our neighbors. Right. And so could she do. could she come up and try it out for a week? Sure. Sure. Certainly. If it wasn't if it wasn't a sure. private situation, said, it wouldn't be legal. And if we do if we do practice the nudism in our homes, we don't do it with our windows open, so we do don't infringe on the rights and, of and our And if neighbors. she becomes a member, does she get a card? Does she become like a card carrying? <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to carry it while you're up here. Where would I carry it? Stay in the We'll be right back. Don't go away. <laughs>
How many times have you wanted to bring your spouse or your partner to the Twin Cities Live studios, but you weren't able to because they work in the morning? Well, now here's your chance to bring your husband or your wife to our next show because next Monday evening we will tape a special edition and you won't want to miss it. The topic, how to achieve the ultimate in sexual pleasure. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, no, not another program telling me how to perform in the bedroom. Uh, but our guests guarantee that if you follow their technical yet sensitive advice, you will have a healthier, happier relationship. Come join us in our studio audience next Monday night. Bring along that special someone to share in the experience of Twin Cities Live. And the number for tickets is 641-1298. You said earlier that, that it's a big uh, campground area. Isn't it possible just to kind of wander in there accidentally? We had a 16-year-old boy do that one year. Uh, it was in the fall, and it was a little chilly. And uh, He was out of, for a hike? They had, they had a bunch of teenagers down at the volleyball court playing volleyball, and, and this kid kind of wandered in through the woods and came out on a path right at the volleyball court. And, uh, Naturally, he and had his clothes on. They thought he was there. Oh, yes. And, and did everybody they? Everybody else did, too, and uh, playing volleyball. and. Uh, they thought he was visiting with someone they just hadn't seen him before, so they got him into the game. He's playing volleyball, having a lot of fun. <laughs> and then a 16-year-old young lady that was pretty well endowed came skipping down the hill just carrying a towel in her hand, no clothes on whatsoever, and this kid just went. <laughs> and, shot, and they knew right away he didn't belong there. So, uh, so he was escorted out, but on the way out, he was asking how he could join. He thought it was really a neat place. <laughs> yeah, I bet he did. Yeah. This is a lot better than 4-H camp. We yeah. had a 15 year, about a 15-year-old girl a couple weeks back. She was in the swimming pool. Well, that's the one place that the clothes are not allowed. And she had a top on. Well, quite obvious that she was not a member or a guest. So she was escorted out also. <laughs> but you're right next to an elementary school, aren't you? Yes. Oh, well, we were there first. Actually, it's... <laughs> The it's elementary great. school moved next to us. Mm -hmm. Right, right. We went but when, in there. When there we were actually, they're a, they're a half a mile down the road and across the creek and things like that. So, when we first uh, started the club, before we even could buy the land or get uh, get the land purchased, we had to go to all our neighbors that touched onto the land and get a petition from mm -hmm. have them sign a petition that they were in agreement with us. And one negative person would have outlawed the whole thing and, and we didn't have it seen. and one of them was the sheriff <laughs> do they allow uh, booze on the ground yes beer and booze yes. they do on your campground beer. lot as long as you use it in moderation and uh, occasionally when there's a club function in moderation in the in the clubhouse but uh, moderation is the uh, byword there who, who owns the club it's all all members. It's a co-op co owned corporation. There was a time when alcohol was, was not allowed on the ground. Yeah, it's relatively yes. new law. Yes. Do you practice this at home then? Yes, we do. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. Some people Whenever do, it's convenient I think, and suitable, it's sure. convenient. Some people yes. do, some people don't. Some people only go up to the club and take off their clothes. Other people at home a lot and come to the club once in a while. It depends on how close you live and a lot of things. Well, if you have a whirlpool, a sauna, or a steam room, or whatever in your home, it's a lot more appropriate, of course. We are uh, reading and hearing so much about uh, skin cancer caused by uh, suntan booths and, and direct exposure to the sun and all that. Are you more susceptible to skin cancer? Do you worry about that? Not uh, according to statistics no. that have been published. But you use it in moderation. Yes. I mean, if you're starting to be out in the sun for the first few days, you take it easy. Use sun sunscreen, rather. And you just use the common sense. You don't just sit there and bake or burn. There are some people who are nudists who became nudists because they have skin diseases and were told by dermatologists to get themselves out in the sun and ended up joining nudist clubs because they came out to heal their skin. And it worked very well for them, too. For health reasons. Yes. Mm -hmm. Stay with us. We'll be back in a minute on Twin Cities Live. High on a hill It calls to
like some more information about our topic today, the nudists, you can uh, call City Line 645-6060, enter category 8020. That's our information line on the City Line. And if you'd like some more information about Avitan Incorporated, uh, you can write to Post Office Box 309, P.O. Box 309, Minneapolis 55. 440 is the zip code. We have a wonderful audience full of questions this morning, so let's close out that way. Go ahead. Do you have uh, handicap facilities? And do yeah. any handicapped people go up there? Yes, yes we do. As a matter of fact, we just built a new public facility building last year, and uh, being that we're registered with the state, uh, the campgrounds, et cetera, we have to keep up the state code and federal code and all that access to the, you know, to the building and the, the toilets and everything are mm -hmm. for. How many handicapped members do you have? Uh, Actually, in a wheelchair, we have uh, one that visits the club. In a wheelchair, we've had others that have come that have if. had some sort of handicap or another. And yes, I'd like to ask the people up there, especially the Canadians, uh, you've made reference about what you do during the, the summer months. What do you do during the winter? Uh, go south or? or? No, we're, as far as the club goes, we're very fortunate to have the full use of a YMCA uh, building from 8 o'clock on a Saturday evening until we want to close it up. We have the keys to the building and let ourselves in and out and use every, everything in the building mm -hmm. uh, for the four hours or, or whatever in the evening. And this has been going on for about uh, 15 years With since Avicam I got that going. We do have winter, yes. winter okay. activities yeah. in people's we, homes. We have uh, sure. for the saunas and yeah. stuff that you can use inside at the club, too. Or whirlpools, yeah. yeah. Is there anyone here that was born with clothes on, came into this world <laughs> with <laughs> clothes on? Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> Do you have church services up there? Pardon? Do you have church services up there? Not no, at our no, grounds, no. we do not. But, but at many of them, there are some. Yes. Yes. You do. I wonder if you're going to. in Florida and California do have regular Sunday services. They're non denominational. Yes. Oh, that's yes. what I was wondering. Yes. <laughs> if you were members of. Uh, Father Patrick, most of the members. Right? If you people were members of churches. Yes. Most yeah. of the organized people up there, religion. whatever organized religion you belong to, there is a church not too far from the club. Yeah grounds and so you they leave just the club go grounds and go oh, sure. individually. Yeah. So will you now be inviting Father to go along? <laughs> we won't mention him. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's Who watching. Who did I leave out up here? I left somebody out on the back row who had a question all morning. Well, we, uh, well being nudist, how come you are all like white or pale? You know, you think you'd be tan. I don't you think know. I'm pale. Oh. Depends how often the, you can get out. We can get out yeah. that often. In the last 45 days, I went to work 43 times. Yeah, and usually for 12. Hotel accommodations and dining provided by the Radisson University Hotel, 615 Washington Avenue Southeast, on the University of Minnesota East Bank campus. Limousine service provided by Henderson Chauffeur Cadillacs. Hair and makeup provided by the Terrace Hair Stylist, 2004 Hennepin Avenue, Minneapolis. While we're uh, watching those messages there at home, we all checked out their tan lines. And <laughs> <laughs> I have a question to address to the children of the nudist parents, and that is as they're growing right now, the age they are, teenager I think is one of them, how, how they feel towards sexuality and you know if they're more aroused or curious or less or I think it has taken the curiosity away from them I have brought them up with the fact that the body was made by God and it was nothing to be ashamed of it like I say it's in the eye of the beholder you all have been uh, fascinating thank you for spending an hour with us thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.